Wanna see something cool, guys? I am going to disguise as dinner bone. And this is all done without using any command block. Whoa. Hey guys, this is Red, welcome back to a new Minecraft video. Today I find myself back again on the Diamond Fire server. Maybe some of you guys remember what this server is about because I have recorded a couple of videos some time ago and maybe some of you which are new on my channel don't even know what this server does. So to make it short, basically in this server you can create or recreate mini games without the use or knowledge of command blocks. Yes, that's right. And in today's exact video I am going to show you guys things that you can't do with command blocks but that you can do without command block. I, I know it sounds a bit strange how I said it, but that's true. Basically, you, you can create stuff that command blocks can't do, but without command blocks, you can do on this server. So first of all, before starting the video, I want to thank Diamond Fire for sponsoring this video. And I think that it's finally time to go to my plot by right clicking on this item. And then I have already here the plot that I have create, created a really long time ago. And here I have a mini game which I have created when I like started my channel, I have created a mini game using common blocks. And basically on this server, what I did the last time, I have recreated that mini game without using common blocks, which is pretty amazing, the things that you can do here. So now I want to, do, to go in mode code, because of course I wanna show you guys how you can code stuff here. Now, this video is not a tutorial on how to use this stuff, I will leave a card appearing on the screen where I made a proper tutorial showing you guys how you can use these uh, blocks but basically to make it really really short you have these blocks here game actions player actions they are like common blocks when you place them down you can right click on the sign and here basically it's like a common block that has already the commands written inside so you don't have to write the commands even if you don't know the commands if you don't know what commands minecraft has you use these blocks here and they have everything already preset here and all you have to do is to use a bit of logic, combine these actions together to create proper mini games in Minecraft really easily and fast. So for example, I have right clicked here, this is like a repeating command block, which means that it will check every time when a player does something. So if I click on this potato here, it will detect when a player joins a game. If I click here, it will detect when a player breaks a block, etc, etc, etc. So guys, let me now delete the plot because I want to show you some really cool things that uh, you can't do with common blocks or that is like really, really hard to recreate with common blocks and mechanics. Okay, first thing that you can do here, but you can't do with common blocks in Minecraft is that you can detect right click. Now. Wait, wait a bit. Let me explain what type of right click. So with command blocks, you can detect right click, but only when you right click, for example, a villager or when you right click on a, I don't know, an item frame and check if the item is turned around on the item frame. But there is no way to detect when a player right clicks and that's it. Like when a player right clicks on nothing, just without using villagers, without using anything, just right click detection, for when a player right clicks with the mouse, doesn't matter where he is and what he's doing. In this server you can do it. How do we detect for right click? We place down a player event block and here we have player right click event or player left click so you can also detect if a player left clicks which is so again something that can't be done with command blocks. So let's do the one for left click. Now this will detect when a player left clicks but it will still do nothing because we didn't place a player action or a game action. One cool other cool thing that is basically in, that is impossible to do with common blocks is that you can disguise as other players. Yes, you can do it. So if I click on this uh, player action, disguise as player, now it's selected this option. There's only one thing that you have to do. We have to decide in which player we want to disguise. So we go here on the variable items. We take the text because we want to input a text into this uh, chest here and while holding the item we just write in chat the name of the player that we want to be So let's say that I want to be the creator of Minecraft the almighty notch and then press enter and As you can see now the item is renamed notch So let's place the item inside this chest and now every time that the player right clicks I did I, I wanted to yeah left clicks every time that the player left clicks He will be disguised into notch. Let's see if it works. Let's go in mode play all right, and all right, I'm here. Now I will left click, so you will hear me clicking, and I'm notch. That's incredibly awesome. That's something impossible to do with the command blocks, is, I don't know, maybe with resource packs you can do something like that, 
maybe, but you will not have the player moving like fluidly like a normal player. It's just it's just a normal player. So I'm not in Minecraft. Let's see what other players we can be. Slash mode code. Right, slash mode code. Alright, let's say that we wanna be log.zip. Why not? So let's write in chat while holding the item log.zip without capitalizing the D and the Z. That's it. Let's place this item in, in the chest. Let's go in mode play. And now if I right click, uh, left click, I'm locked on zip and I also have his cape. <laughs> That's amazing. So guys, in this server you can disguise as like your favorite YouTuber, your favorite player, as other players, as Notch, as anyone you want. So this is a pretty cool one guys. It's something that it's actually doable with command blocks, but you would need so many command blocks that you would lag your world and it would take a really, really long time to set up all of the different directions. And what I'm talking about is that every time that the player right clicks with an arrow in its hand, basically it will generate an arrow which will go in exact direction where you are looking at. So it works not only for like four preset directions like north, south, east, west. It works for every single angle where you are looking. So let me show you guys how it works. Mode play. And okay, let me hold the spectral arrow. And if I right click, it will generate arrows in every single direction where I look. This is really precise. And you can see it's something doable with common blocks. Yes. But as I said, is it would take a really, really, really long time. Now you can see that these arrows also have a custom name. They are spectral arrows and they have a custom speed, which you can change, and also a custom trail, which are the new totem particles added in the new in Minecraft 1.11. Let me show you guys the code, and I have set this up really easily. I have placed down a player event set to right clicks, to right click, then a if player event, which is detecting if the player is holding on its main hand, a item and the item that I want to detect is the spectral arrow then I place a player action which basically will launch a projectile so you click on this one and here you can place different various items now when you hover on one of these items for example on launch projectile you can see on the description of the item that it tells you projectiles comma proje projectile comma text name a comma number which will change the speed location etc so Basically what we have to do we place the projectile if you want to summon not spectral arrows by different arrows Like arrow of leaping you just place the arrow here. Look at how simple it is then you take the uh, text command You take the text item you type def or it doesn't matter what you want to name your arrows and you place the item in the in the chest Then you take the number item and you set a number for example. I have set it to five. Let's set it to uh, 10 now in this case the arrows will be shot with a higher speed and then if you take the particle item Look at how simple it's to set the particles up You take the item you right click and you choose the particle that you want to play the speed particle Let's see is the new um, yeah, I have to place this item here and if I go in mode play and I right click you can see that we have the new speed particles and we have also a different type of arrow and also it is going way faster than it was doing before. Okay guys, so this one can be partially recreated with command blocks, but it works only for villagers. So with command blocks, you can right click villagers and detect when you did it, only with villagers. But here you can detect any kind of mob. So if you right click any type of mob, this will detect it. And I added a simple player action, which will give four half hearts of damage. So if I go in mode, play, and I try to right click on this mule, you can see that He's really really bad with me and it deals really big damage so I can actually die from it Yeah, so I died because I right clicked on a mule Okay guys, so this is the last one for this video then you can come join the server and try them by yourself and this one is a um, Something again that cannot be done with command blocks So basically with command blocks We cannot use an entity data command and apply a motion to a player now thanks to this server now we can do it. So I have changed it before it was when a player right clicks with an arrow in its uh, main hand, it will uh, shoot an arrow. Now I change it to, um, I just want the player to be launched up in the air. So let's say launch forward. And then of course we need to take a number item and say how much we want to launch the player forward. Let's say 20. Okay, and the item changed. And also we take another player action, we place it here. And now we set launch upwards. We take another number variable here and how much we want to uh, launch the player up in the air. 
with a motion of 10. And then, let's place the item here. If I go in, well, look, people are already like flying. And if I go in mode, play. Now, if I right click with my arrow, you can see that I, I basically have an anti data motion command applied to me. And as you can see, I can fly up in the air, even though I am in survival mode. And I can launch myself up in the air without using TNTs or other stuff. So this is really cool if you want to create, for example, player cannons. Pretty useful. And now I'm gonna die. So guys, that was it about today's video here on the Diamond Fire server mode code. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you want to join this server, the IP can be found here. I will leave it also in the video description. Come and check out this server. Maybe you can create some mini games. And don't forget that if you find yourself stuck, if you don't know how to use something, you have this request support item. And if you right click on it, basically someone, the uh, available support people, there are two of them now, for example, online, they will come and help you. So that was it about today's video, guys. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Definitely give a try to this server. It's pretty, pretty cool. You can do some really cool stuff. And I want to thank you all for watching this video until the end. And I'll see you all in the next one. See you. Bye.